goodness. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. First up today, Chef Tanya Brandt is back to introduce us to one of her Thanksgiving dishes. Please welcome Chef Tanya. <laughs> when you are in the kitchen. <laughs> oh. I got a, uh, I like to take in your dietary restrictions. Yeah, I highly <laughs> appreciate it. We got a vegetarian dish right here and I'm very, very pumped. Yeah. So Tanya, what is Thanksgiving like in your house? Um, well, it's definitely a gathering of times uh, for everybody, right? We all have that meal. We have the days off of work, all yeah. of that thing. Um, it's definitely a controversial holiday for Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. I definitely wanted to touch on that. Mm -hmm. um, but in my household and my home, my family, um, we really try to focus on the fact that it's a harvest time and yeah. a harvest celebration in celebrating these gorgeous foods that we have here, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what we try to do. Um, bright side, I guess, and it's still family get together, all yeah. you know, all the nieces and nephews and everybody running around. So it's definitely a good day. So yeah. that's, and that's what's important, right? That's the thing, and you yeah. always talk so much about food and how kind of the calendar is shaped around those things, which is really, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's what, it, this is like an accumulation of the year, right? Yeah. So you're harvesting and you're thinking all of these for um, doing their original instructions from Creator and doing what it is that they were meant to do and still providing for us. So we're definitely happy to have all those gorgeous foods. Yeah. And, it, and it is, it's a celebration of those. That's amazing. Okay, so what are you making for <clears throat> us today? So we are going to do an egg corn squash stuffed with a wild rice. Stuffing. Stuffing, yes. Love that. So. Oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> so where are we getting started? Um, definitely the first thing you're gonna do is get your squashes in the oven. We want them cooked to fork tender. Nice. So we'll do that. I don't know, are we gonna race here? Oh gosh, I don't wanna <laughs> race with a squash cutting. <laughs> All right, so we're doing acorn yeah. today? So acorn, you wanna kinda, you can see how it has the ridges, just for safety's sake. You wanna I, have that not rolling around. I cheated and I cut the end of mine off. Safer That's safer <laughs> <laughs> a nice flat so, guy. We'll show you that they're both possible, right? Yeah, get it down. <laughs> this yep. is sometimes and what I do. I cut it right through, but you can kind of crack it like that, and you'll see that the your little stem will be on one side, and it can break off very easily. Oh, that was so much cooler. See, now you got to do that cool thing. <laughs> I got rid of my stem too early. Yeah. I got no snap here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just going to clean those out. Just scoop Traditionally, all those if I'm working with any um, heirloom mm -hmm. varieties of squash, mm -hmm. I definitely... We save those seeds, right? Yeah. Squash seeds are almost something that we never throw out in Uego. Um, and then those go back to some gardens. We mm -hmm. gift some of them. We can dry them and use them for flour. They're way more nutritious than the actual fruit, right? So, oh, that's amazing. And do you, so, yeah. so you, you will, do you ever like toast them or roast them or anything? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. delicious. I love a roasted um, seed. Yeah, like, and butters can be made with like any kind of seed as well. Oh, I never thought so of that. So you can do like a pumpkin butter, a, a sunflower butter, like mm -hmm. anything like that is, is great. So. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. So, that's easy, that's all we gotta do with those, just hollow those out and you see that? We're gonna oil and salt and pepper them and Perfect. put them in the oven. You can prick them with just like a fork or yeah. whatever, but. Just to get some stuff in not, there? Yeah, it's not super, uh, super necessary. No. It's, they're gonna bake for you. <laughs> if you're having people over, I like the least amount of work possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody, we'll do some pepper, a little bit of salt. Now, do you ever put anything like sweet on here? Do you usually stick like honey or, do, or maple um, or do you stick with that? Generally maple, yeah. yes. Um, I don't think we really needed it today. We're gonna have a bit of sweetness from the cranberries. So. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll pop good. these in the oven and roast them up. Okay. Till nice and fork tender. And we'll get started on this stuffing here. Beautiful. I got a pan on about medium heat. And the first thing I wanna do is put some oil in here. So the wild rice that I brought today, mm -hmm. um, we par cooked it. Okay. And one of the things that you're gonna notice is it looks a little bit different than what the wild rice you normally see. Mm -hmm. And that's because this is a hand harvested rice. Okay. Um, this is one of the best rices in the in the world, really. And on top of that, wild rice isn't rice, it's a grass seed. Cool. Right? So yeah. Um, and ridiculously nutritious as well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put Ooh, this on the sizzle. side. You know what? I forgot I have onions, so I'm gonna put those on this side and we'll cook them kind of separate. It'll all come together. And then, yeah, it'll all Ooh, it's popping. Thing. Ooh, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like popcorn kind of because it's have a seed. Have you ever right? had popped um <laughs> popped wild rice? I have not, but I feel like I'm gonna get yeah, some you now. Can deep fry it and it puffs up like if you're putting like a trail mix or anything like that. It's kind of like a popcorn. It's, it's really a little cool. Crispy. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So very traditional ingredients here for Thanksgiving, some celery and onions we're yeah. gonna start with. Um, and we also have some sunchokes. 
Um, they're also called Jerusalem artichokes. These babies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So these grow outside like everywhere. You'll see this really pretty flower. It's like a mini sunflower and it's in the sunflower family. And this grows on the roots. So you have to have a plant that's two or three years old to get a nice size sun chokes like that. That's but amazing. But if you see them, the thing is, is you have to wait till after the first frost to harvest them because they get sweeter. Oh, right? okay. So you need to know where those plants were growing because they're going to be gone, right, by the time that it's actually time to pick them. Yeah. And, yeah, they say you let it go for a couple of, of freezings and, and they're sweeter. See, that's but, good. It's like, I, I think that's yeah. so cool when some things kind of come to fruition at different times of the year. Oh, definitely. 100%. Right? So if we're th talking about Indigenous food, eating seasonally is something that, that, that's huge for us because yeah. that's an, a teaching where they tell you when something's a season, eat as much as, of it, as you can yeah. until you're sick of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the reason for that is that your body's storing up those nutrients that you might not get for another year, mm -hmm. right? So that's why when we're talking about these foods, that's how we're doing that. So these are just kind of sauteing. Mm -hmm. They're getting translucent on us. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other things that we're going to put in there, I brought some black walnuts. Oh. Um, so these are a little bit harder to find, and they're also ridiculously easy to find because yes. they're everywhere outside. I was going <laughs> to say, you see them just hanging out yeah. on the ground. <laughs> so you have to take those when they're green, and you put them aside, and they got to, like, that green kind of turns black. Yeah. But the thing is, the shells you can use for a dye. You can stain wood. You can stain clothing. Mm. Like, all of those types of things. They're way more nutritious than the one you would find in the grocery store. The flavor on that, they're, like, a little sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, that was so, delicious. Yeah. But the thing is, is you can't get those whole nice walnuts because the way the walnut grows, it grows all in and around it. So you got to break them and take mm. it out. And it's definitely way more labor, labor intensive. Labor intensive. But you get the know, flavor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the story ain't going to do that for you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to put about half of these and the other ones we'll top with. Nice. Some little so, pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Some pumpkin seeds and some cranberries. So these will um, cook down a bit. I'm going to save just a couple for the top, but yeah. I do want them to saute a little. I love that. Um, and yeah, we can throw the mushrooms in too. Okay. What type of mushrooms? So, these are beautiful. Beautiful yes, mushrooms. these are forged mushrooms. Um, they were dried and then we reconstituted them. So I see chanterelles mm -hmm. in there. I think that's a boltus there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just anything. And this is like high season for any type of wild mushrooms. Like they're everywhere right now. So it's definitely a good time to, to, get, to out get out there. there yeah. Always take a friend foraging. <laughs> Somebody that you know, there's like a lot of different, um, like a boltus has 40 different varieties. Not all of them are edible. No. Couple, so even I wouldn't pick them. I definitely let, yeah, throw it in throw it. And is a, is a boltus the same as like a porcini? Um, Similar? It looks at this, the shape and stuff. Yeah. 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 And it some smells. of them have the really great like red tops and yeah. stuff, but it's like I'm pretty sure like all of them aren't edible. So. Yeah, I know. I, it's one thing. I love. I'm someone who goes around when I'm quote foraging for mushrooms. I just look at them, take a picture, and I'll leave them. <laughs> and I, I send it to somebody like, hey, so what's this? Yeah, I, can I can I eat this one? Yeah. yeah. I have one cousin that does forage mushrooms, and he sells to uh, restaurants out in Niagara on the lake. Oh, right stuff. on. So I do have somebody kind of in my back pocket if I have any any, any extreme questions there. So we'll throw the rest of the wild rice into. Amazing. And then what's uh, we got. A little bit one, of... Yeah, we're going to season with that. Nice. So this is all coming together. It um, smells so good. Yeah, you want to get... So wild rice is super high in protein mm -hmm. as well. There's about 15 grams of protein for uncooked. Um, so it works out to about 4 grams of protein once it's cooked. Okay. Because wild rice triples in size when you, when you cook it. Nice. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's gluten-free, it's vegan, it's all the things, right? It's a right? seed, it's a big old bowl of seeds, <laughs> and I love that, that's amazing. But you definitely want to think about that if you're doing any type of, um, like, vegan cooking, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're thinking of the palate, you gotta, there still has to be fat there, like, things like that, totally. right? Totally. Like, um, so little that's bit a little bit of oregano. Mm. Um, the other thing... Is this your classic spice blend? No? Uh, is it? Maybe. Looks like it. it smells kind of like smell. it. Tanya makes a spice blend. So this is the Uego House seasoning. Yes, <laughs> from your shop, and it is so delicious. She gave me a couple little packets, and I put it on potatoes because I really <laughs> like potatoes, and it is so good, so garlicky. It's either that or uh, it might have just been poultry seasoning well, to make it taste like I'm going to pretend it was your seasoning because <laughs> I, I like that, it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> They'll both work. Put it that way, right? Yeah. They'll both work. Um, and then, you, yeah, you do kind of want that stuffing sort of taste in there so you can get some, like, sage, thyme, totally. those, those familiar favorites. Flavors, because, you know, whoever's eating, if they're not eating the turkey, they're probably not eating the stuffing because they were probably cooked together. In so the you really want to think about those people or any that are oh at your gosh. dinner. This is why I appreciate, one of the reasons I appreciate you, <laughs> because I, I'm usually, I don't eat the turkey. So having a side that is full of protein and it's got everything that I need in it, mm. I can still enjoy that Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, you're getting meatiness from, the from those. You're getting your grains. You're getting just a ridiculous amount of vitamins yeah. from like all the ingredients in here are yeah. just like super healthy foods, right? That's amazing. So, so now we, we transfer this into a pan, right? Yes, yeah, so we are gonna bake this. 
in the oven. A little bit of golden brown on top? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. You want some of those little crunchy bites and we can put some on top to make it extra pretty. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Do you wanna, do you wanna come with me? We can go to the oven? Sure. We're gonna go on a little trip to the oven. I love it. <laughs> Pop her in okay. there. Nice, and can I hand you these babies? Sure. And we'll grab, so we've got the squash and the stuffing all baked up, ready to go. Oh my gosh, that looks beautiful. <gasps> I love the way it Get ready. <laughs> I'm a stuffing girl. I'm a stuffing Yeah, I'm a stuffing girl. Okay. Look at these here. little babies. <laughs> oh, that looks beautiful. So how do we plate this up? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our squash boats, we're gonna mm -hmm. put them onto our plate. Here you go. Let's see, I have chef hands. Mm -hmm. we go. I yeah, I know, I was like, <laughs> chef hands. You can touch anything hot. hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do as I say, not as I do. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> I do okay. that all the time. So we have our squash boats there. We're just gonna fill it up with the stuffing. <sighs> and really, that's just ready to go after that. If you wanna put some fresh seasoning, put some fresh walnuts on top. Oh my God, look so at so that. They are very cute. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that little mushroom right on yeah. top with those cranberries. Oh my gosh, and you could really like overfill these. Oh, definitely, yeah. Listen, my husband Aaron, when I first started dating him, he was really into stuffed peppers. I don't love a stuffed <laughs> pepper. So I started doing stuffed acorn squash. Mm, yeah. Best yeah. of both worlds. Marriage, it really it's about is. compromise, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm the same way, actually. I would, I would definitely prefer squash over pepper. A hundred percent. Tanya, this looks absolutely <laughs> beautiful. I'm gonna give this an old taste root with this ginormous spoon first. Let me give it a taste. Okay. <laughs> like, do it. Just going in for the stuffing. Oh my God. Oh, oh <laughs> It's so nutty and it's a little sweet, the little yeah. crispy on top. Tanya? You're definitely hitting all your flavor palettes. They're salty, they're sweet, there's bitter almost from the sun choke. Yes. And, yeah. And then those yeah. cranberries. Oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.